Welcome to a quick rundown of the top 10 things you need to know about the FileMaker 19 release. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTraining.tv, where we create great video training courses as well as provide daily live stream FileMaker training. Now, number one on our list is that Claris is switching from an annual release cycle to a more frequent release cycle, say every three or four months, which means that you'll be getting more frequent updates with new features. That also means that you're going to start to see features that Claris calls preview, which is really kind of a fancy way of saying they are beta features that you should try out and provide feedback for, but you really shouldn't use in a production environment just yet. And why do I mention this as the number one thing to know? Well, number two on the list are add-on modules. Add-on modules are pre-baked packages of capabilities or features that you just drag and drop onto your FileMaker file. Say, for example, you want to drag and drop a calendar onto FileMaker. Well, there's been calendar kits and other software tools that companies like myself have created, but imagine deploying a calendar with a single drag and drop. Well, it's a little bit more work than that, but it's about 80% easier than anything we've had previously. Of course, a calendar is an easy example, but they're talking about Kanban boards, charting, all sorts of capabilities that normally you would have to build yourself into a FileMaker file, or you'd have to maybe copy and paste from someone else's FileMaker file. Well, now, senior developers in the FileMaker community can build pre-packaged add-on modules that deliver this capability to you. Now, we've been playing with prototype add-on modules for a number of months, providing feedback to Claris. And starting with the 19 release, this capability is now being turned on. And so as the months go on, you're going to see new add-on modules being turned on and enabled, which will allow you to drag and drop those onto your FileMaker custom app. This is really a huge deal in the world of FileMaker because being able to easily drag and drop a capability with tables and fields and scripts and layout objects and all these sorts of things, well, that was just really difficult to do and now it's becoming much easier. Now, the number three thing you need to know about the FileMaker 19 release is that developers can build these add-on modules themselves. So the plan going forward is that Claris will have some official add-on modules that will be available then third-party developers can develop their own add-on modules, which will be free, or they can be purchased, etc. So it creates this entire ecosystem of add-on capabilities that can easily extend your FileMaker custom app. Now, number four on our list is also really big, and that is much tighter integration with the Web Viewer object or JavaScript library that you can put in the Web Viewer object. Now, Web Viewers have been around in FileMaker for many, many years. In fact, they can do some really cool things. But integrating them with a FileMaker solution was always a little bit of a hack. Well, now Claris has given us direct calls so we can call these applications specifically that are inside the web viewer. And that web viewer can directly communicate to the FileMaker application without using a URL protocol or other workaround. Now, when you hear Claris talking about FileMaker 19, they will frequently take items number two, three, and four and mix them into a single conversation. What's important to understand is that add-on modules can deliver a wide variety of capabilities to the FileMaker platform. They can deliver a web viewer with JavaScript code in it, which is really great. In fact, that's the ultimate culmination of these new capabilities is delivering that seamlessly. However, you can use add-on modules to deliver all sorts of things, not just web viewers with JavaScript. Now, number five on our list is really huge as well. And once again, this is a preview release, so it's being released. The documentation is just now starting to come out, and we're starting to learn about this capability, and that's the ability for you to create patcher or update files where you can patch a FileMaker custom application. Now, starting with the release of FileMaker 17, we had the data migration tool, which allows us to rapidly move gigabytes of data from one FileMaker file to a newer updated version of the FileMaker file. Well, that command line tool was a bulk data mover at high speed. But what we're getting now in 19 is the ability to, instead of moving the data from an old file to a new file, we leave the data and the file in one place, but we apply updates and patches to that existing file. And FileMaker calls this the app upgrade tool. Now, once again, Claris has been working on the underlying engineering that allows us to have add-on modules or app upgrade patches And that technology is effectively the same. It's ability for FileMaker to describe in precise detail the exact structure of each FileMaker file. Historically, this has never been possible 
because FileMaker was written on this proprietary engine with proprietary processes. Well, now you can actually export all the code of your FileMaker custom application. You can go into it and text edit and change items and identify sections of the code that you want to patch into another file. Now, to be honest with you, this is a very senior skill set, but what's really great about this for everyone else is that senior developers won't be limited by the tools in FileMaker. They can build more modules, more capabilities. It's easier for those modules and capabilities to be shared between different users without having to rebuild the capabilities from scratch in every solution. These are capabilities that we've been asking for for many years, and they're finally beginning to arrive, and we're very excited about that. Now, number six on our list of things you need to know is that Claris is putting hooks or commands that allow us to tap into machine learning, and that's specific to FileMaker Go and FileMaker Pro on the Macintosh. So this allows FileMaker to take advantage of machine learning processes and to have FileMaker act in a more intelligent fashion. Say, for example, if you had a bunch of images go in front of FileMaker, could FileMaker identify a specific item on the image? Could it identify the vehicles in the image? Or could it identify license plates on the image? And could it read those license plates? Well, all that's part of machine learning. It's been around for a while where you could integrate FileMaker with IBM's Watson or other technology like that, or even Amazon's machine learning. But this brings the machine learning down into the FileMaker custom application itself, which opens a lot of interesting doors. Now, number seven on our list is a collection of miscellaneous items that I want to mention real quick. First off, we have dark mode support for the Macintosh. We have card style window support on WebDirect. A lot of people use WebDirect and they want to have support for the card style windows. That's on there. We also have a drag and drop installer for the Macintosh, which means that all you have to do is open up FileMaker Pro and then drag and drop it to your applications folder and you're done with the installation. Also, for those of you who are fans of Linux, there is now a Linux version of FileMaker Server. So there's a Mac server, a Windows server, a Linux server, and there's also FileMaker Cloud up on Amazon. So you have a number of deployment options for the FileMaker platform. Now, the number eight thing you need to know is that there is no file format change with the 19 release. It's still FMP12, which means that if you have a FileMaker solution that was working in FileMaker, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, it should work on FileMaker 19. Now, of course, you want to test to make sure any special capabilities are working as you expect. If you're upgrading, you want to test to make sure that if you have connections to ODBC or SQL data sources, those connections are still working. If you have a PHP custom web page that's talking to FileMaker, you need to test that in advance. That being said, there is no file conversion. So FileMaker 19 can read the same FMP12 file that we've had since FileMaker 12. Number nine on our list are the minimum operating systems that you need to be using in order to take advantage of the FileMaker 19 platform. So if you're on Mac, it's going to be macOS 10.14 or 10.15. That's Mojave or Catalina. If you're on Windows, there's a change here. The minimum operating system is Windows 8.1. Windows 7 is no longer supported. So you have Windows 8.1 or Windows 10. And with that, you should be in good shape running FileMaker Pro. If you're running FileMaker Go, you need to have at least iOS 13.2. Now, Apple is very prolific in creating lots of iOS devices. It's a little overwhelming. And so you need to check to make sure you can use at least iOS 13.2. And from my personal experience, I think you have to have at least an iPhone 6S or better on the phone side in order to take advantage of that operating system. Now, the last thing you need to know about with the FileMaker 19 release is that there are some deprecated features and features that have been removed. And most of these features are not in heavy use. For example, creating runtimes in the FileMaker platform with FileMaker Pro is no longer supported. If you want to create a runtime for FileMaker Go and submit that to the Apple Store, that is definitely supported and still available. But creating a runtime out of FileMaker 19 that runs on Mac or Windows is no longer in the product. Additionally, FileMaker has announced that they plan to deprecate peer-to-peer -peer sharing, which is where you have one FileMaker user sharing with a couple other FileMaker users in an ad hoc network. Now, that sort of setup has a lot of challenges. Specifically, there's no automatic backups. There's no encryption and security, et cetera. So peer-to-peer -peer sharing is not the best way to really share a FileMaker application with other people on your team. 
So that pretty much wraps up the top 10 things you need to know about the FileMaker 19 product. If you want to learn more about FileMaker training, then check out fmtraining.tv where we have video courses that you can purchase or come visit us every day when we're doing live FileMaker training from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock Pacific time. And to catch that, you want to visit fmtraining.tv and press the live tab on the left side and you can see the upcoming schedule of events and even sign up to get a reminder.